Alrighty, hello again everyone. This is going to be a quick video, just a little quick tips video, on how to use a snapshot tool in Max to create a quick chain. Um, really what it is, is I haven't shown off Rail Clone, but if you've used Rail Clone, it's just a very simple way that can get you Rail Clone-like results and I find it very easy for creating chains. Um, you can use it for creating a lot of things, creating lights down the road, creating, I don't know, pebbles down a path, creating cobblestones, creating something that is evenly spaced out along a path. And that's really all a chain link is, is chain links spread out evenly along a chain path. So first what we're going to do to start this is we're going to make our uh, chain link itself. So I'm just going to do like an St standard new chain link one. Um, don't worry about your units, I'm just using generic units right now. But that's not the right button. Yes, I'm just going to use generic units because it's just a quick tips video. So, for what I want to do, I'm just going to create a circle. So go under splines, circle, and then drag it out. And I'm going to make the radius, let's say, 3. Yeah, that's good enough radius. Zoom in on that, center it out. I just have my snapping tools turned on to, I guess, a lot of things. I usually don't like that, that, that. I like those two. Sometimes we get points. But yeah. Anyways, so let's right click, convert to edible spline. That simple one. Go to vertices, select these two vertices, or just the two opposite vertices. Doesn't matter which ones. What we're going to do now is chamfer them. So just hit chamfer. Click on the vertice and drag a bit. And what this does is it gives us now six vertices that we need so we can pull these three apart at whatever length we want to. And then there we go. So now that's almost chain zone's done. But as you know, chain links act isn't actually a uh, links aren't proper. They're just bent over and then there's usually places where they're broken. So we're gonna have to recreate that too. I mean, as de you can go as detailed as you want to. I like going a bit more detailed with this one because, uh, there we go, just because, I mean, I'm not doing a low poly uh, scene right now, so I'm just going to pull that out, pull this out, make sure that's proper, that's good. And next thing I'm going to do is I'm going into rendering, go to render and enable viewport and render, and make the thickness like 2.5. That's a pretty big thick, so let's make 1.75. Now yeah, that looks like a standard chain link. Nothing too big, nothing too small, just kind of standard chain link. So now select it, right click, convert to edible poly. And now we have a nice little chain link poly. So next what we're going to do is create the path that our chain is going to go on. So we create a line, click our path, look around the path. That's going to be way too sharp of a turn, so I'm just going to delete that path. And for this, it really doesn't matter where the path goes. It's just a path, however you want your chain to look. Me, I kind of want it to be wobbly and funny looking sometimes. And we'll end it there. So there's my path. I'm going to turn off Enable and Render and in Viewport, just so, I mean, so I can see it better. And next, what we're going to have to do is create the actual chain link. So for this, since chain links usually look uh, sideways but then the, every next one is perpendicular. Since everything is going to be a copy of itself, we need to make the full double chain link. So because we can't rotate it and we don't want to rotate it halfway through the uh, that even right? 90, there it is. Halfway through each other one throughout the entire path. We just want to be able to copy this and as you can see this tile, this will tile nicely if you just copy it out a few more times. And there we go. Let's see the tiles nicely. So what we want to do is attach this one to that and go under effect pivot. So under our hierarchy tab, go under effect pivot only and pull it back to the middle of the first one. So the middle of the first one would be right here. Hit S to turn off snapping, turn off effect pivot only. And there we go. We have a chain link that is together. Next what we want to do is you want to align along these paths. To do that, you'll click on your chain link, go under animation, go under constraints, yeah, and animation constraints, path constraint. You'll get a rubber band, click on your path you want it on, 
And now, if you scrub through the timeline, you can see that it will follow along like that. This isn't completed yet, because if, if you see we snapshotted it, it's not following the path perfectly because it's turned like 30 degrees to the right. So what we want to do is under our motion tab right here, it should open up automatically, but if it doesn't, just go there. It might be under here, so it's this one with a wheel, I guess. Um, under your path parameters, you can click follow, and as you can see, it follows the path. So maybe yours is looking like this, or sideways like that, Z might be looking down, it might be flipped, yours might be looking like that. So all you want to do is play around with this axis and this flip control until it looks like, it. so until it's following the path like this, until it's following along its, I guess, yeah, X axis for this one, but until it's pointing along the path and the pivot points at the very beginning of the path. So as you see, if we scrub through the timeline, you can see it's following it like a car or of the sort. Alrighty. So next, what we're going to do is just snapshot it. So under tools, snapshot. Sorry, that was a very weird one. And we'll hit range because we want to get the entire segment between 0 and 100. So what this tool does is it takes a snapshot of this object at every, at either a single frame for whichever frame you want to have it at, or at a range of frames between 0 and 100 for our case right now. And we want, and this copy thing is how many times it will print out a copy of our uh, image, I guess. So let's say 15. I don't think that's going to be enough. Usually around 40. Let's do 40. And we're going to copy it. I don't use instance because sometimes you need to create little changes in each one just to take, take, I'm going to tweak it well enough to make it look good. However, I mean, if you don't really want to worry about that, just instance it. It's easier to. Uh, work within the long run. But I'll hit copy, press OK. And as you can see, there are a few little errors here. We need to rotate this one in like that. Let's rotate this one in like that. So just go along your path and rotate them in if you see that you need to. Again, that's a lot of personal preference. And as if now, if you set up the pivot point like we did before, it's very simple to just rotate them in and rotate that one in. Rotate that one in. Rotate it and rotate that one. Man, I really made a horrible path to. This is going to be really exciting for you guys to watch. I can tell. I'm just rotating so much stuff. Up, oh, up, oh. and anyway, so we go there. I'm going to pause it quick. And now that I've rotated the loose stragglers into place, um, and I've unpaused the video, so I'm finished rotating everything. I'm just going to select every one right now quickly change the color to a black and then go under my material editor and I want a metal ray material so let's go under rendering, render setup, um, assign renderer, mental ray, that's good, I just want a material, mental ray, architecture and design, double click on the architecture and design material and just under the template we will go with a satin metal add or assign that material to the objects and press F4 so you can see it without the uh, thing and there we go we have a chain link fence that or ch chain fence, a chain that was very simple to create we created in eight minutes flat um, and yeah you can use it for really anything I, so I hope you guys enjoyed learning how to make a chain fence a chain I guess um, and yeah I will see you guys next time cheers